Hello, I have been AWOL all of October because of so many reasons but I'm here now and I'm going to try and record the vlog for bits of October and November. So let me tell you what happened, okay? So November has been like, a, um, October has been like a mixed bag and uh, there have been so many things happening. There was my birthday, September, the end of September was Appa's birthday and I think there was a lot of, and then Diwali, um, so I think I missed him throughout. It's so hard not to have him uh, with us anymore and it sort of, there was this sort of a, a, a constant funk because of uh, Appa not being there with us anymore. So that's one reason why I just didn't feel like putting myself out there or recording anything or sharing anything. So I lead in, leaned into that feeling and I didn't record anything. Uh, so that's one reason. Diwali was extremely difficult because of just the amount of noise and um, just the, the crackers. And our rescued Indi Tintin is terrified of uh, all sounds. And this of course was traumatic for him and that whole week and even now on weekends um, he's shivering and he's terrified, terrified, terrified of the sound of crackers and we have to console him and hold him. So there's been a lot of stress because of that. Um, so he, he, he runs around from room to room shivering and he, he, he tries to hide into our clothes under the blankets, behind cushions, like he wants us to hold him. So yeah, please think, <laughs> those of you who are watching and don't know this, please think about the fact that we share the planet with so many other living beings and they're terrified, maybe we're celebrating. Um, do think about them as well. Um, our streeties, Honey and uh, Jimmy and I don't know the name of the other one, Brownie. I can only imagine how much more difficult this would have been for them. Uh, so we've been giving them a lot of uh, extra love and pets, Kia and I. I got pest control done at home and it was, it was like insane the amount of time and work it took because we run over with roaches in the kitchen and IKEA visits, planning, organizing, putting everything back took a huge chunk of my time. Oh my god, I seem to have like so many things going on. Um, I also did birdtober, so this was this meant that showing up every single day, irrespective of what's going on in your life, and painting a bird every day. And I'm hoping to share a sweet little my first sketchbook tour with you today uh, of birdtober and take you through uh, the process. Um, and of course the watercolour course has started, the secret garden, Chalky Club is going on, it's like ah, there's a lot going on, which is why, long story for why I didn't, I just didn't have the heart to um, record. Yeah, and one other thing, I am also doing a stitching course uh, where I'm learning, this is uh, taught by a dear friend of mine, Ekta Kaul who's a textile artist who lives and practices in London and I've been stitching and that's been that's actually been good that's been like an oasis of calm and joy in everything else that I've been doing so yeah so that's why you haven't seen me in October so hey my first little sketchbook tour welcome um got myself a nice cup of uh, tea, chamomile tea and uh, let me tell you about this sweet little sketchbook. This is, I'm moving this out of the way so I don't spill it. Um, this is a little Hanomule, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, um, sketchbook. It's 300 GSM, it's a nice handy little size. Um, I usually don't use this sketchbook because it's a little um, expensive. What I do use is the Strathmore, I love the paper. This is the uh, watercolor paper, it's cold press and uh, these are the sheets that I usually use. Um, I love this paper, it's, it's perfect for a sketchbook scenario. 
But this time I thought, you know, I pamper myself with a fancy sketchbook, and it was it was well thought of. Let's open this little band, and ta-da! So with intention, I decided I'd like to dedicate one sketchbook for Birdtober. Birdtober this this year was hosted by Andrea Holmes. I'll hit you up with the link. She is an artist in Dallas. And I just loved her choice of birds. Uh, so a lovely paper, a lovely size. It's just so adorable. Here's my little ch chidia flying all through Birdtober. Mm, so I started off with the with the size in mind because I wanted to be sure that you know I it, this is something that I can finish in a day, which is why my initial ones are so. This is the first one, the rooster. So I was using color pencils for it and I also hadn't used color pencils in a really long time. So I got my um, color pencil set out, which are the Prisma colors and I was working with those. Those blend really beautifully and also some very quick ink and crayon. That was the plan when I started. Um, and I also sort of, all of this is intended right at the beginning that I'm gonna write um, the scientific name, a date, all of that. This is, and then I started um, using a combination of watercolor, gouache. Um, the first few birds I really had, I just love this. The macaroni penguin is so cute. Look at it. Um, it's like a weird bowl man. Um, so I, this is gouache. And I think this is also color pencil. So I didn't really have a fixed medium in mind. The first few birds that I did, I just love the hummingbird. I don't know if you can see the bling, 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 bling. I use some of those lovely little um, uh, gold paints that I had. And uh, this is when I started using watercolor. And I really, um, this color pencil and gold hints. When I started, when I made the swan, the whooper swan is when I felt that uh, it was working really well for this paper. So really the secret of watercolor, and I say this so often, is the right paper, you know. And I felt that I this was this was this was perhaps the style I should go with. This of course is my Vincent and Newton Cotman uh, watercolors that I used for this one. And I used a brustro masking fluid to mask the swan um, and then painted layers. That worked for me. Oh, this is one of my favorite birdies, the zebra finch. Um, so yeah, so that was a style that uh, resonated. It didn't take too long. Uh, it took a couple of hours a day, like two or three. Um, but so watercolors is what I started using. This is the most amazing bird that existed, the secretary bird. If you notice, this is very different from the sort of pale um, watercolors. This is actually photo inks. Um, so this is my old box of photo inks, uh, transparent photo colors, the camel 12 uh, hues. And they come in a cutie little bottle like this. And they have a little dropper, right? And they're very much like... Um, Watercolors, the th difference is they dry really fast and they're very concentrated. So a small drop will go a long way. And um, so I started using those instead and they also dry much faster. So then by the time I drew, I think my fifth bird, I knew, seventh bird, I knew that's what I wanted to do. The sun conure. Uh, so then this whole concept developed, you know, sometimes you have to do something several times before a style sets in and it makes sense for you the razor bill lovely blue washes and gray so i want to show you what what i what i used as a palette this is an old tile ceramic tile that i picked up a hundred years ago and that's been sitting in one corner of my shelf so that's how you work with photo inks you sort of take a little drop you put a little tiny drop and you use water and a tile works really well because uh, the colors show through and you don't need too much you don't need big puddles so that's what i used as a palette 
So if you're planning to experiment with these, it would be lovely to get a tile, but it, it's not a hard and fast rule, you know? I mean, you can use anything you have. A lot of these birds are birds I've never seen, though. I think I have seen the pileated woodpecker in Bandipur, and I went on a safari in Bandipur with my students. I love how photo inks glow. They sort of, ra they're so radiant. Um, and the layers dry fast. So this is all the same. It's a combination of uh, photo wings and the brushstroke masking fluid to mask the bird out. Where I live, there are lots of drongos and I sight the drongos all the time and, and I love their flight, their swooping flight. So I, yeah, these are like commonly seen around where I live in the green canopies. I started using thinner brushes, looking at detail. That's the oriental turtle dove. I've seen the oriental turtle dove as well. Lucky me, actually. I've seen a lot of birds. I'm an amateur birder. And uh, Shami gifted this lovely binoculars and uh, two fat tomes of bird books. So every time I'm traveling, I carry all that with me. And I try and spot a bird and then go through the pages to find it. This is the Philippine eagle which is an endangered species. So photo colors are not just sort of you for bright palettes. You can also do really muted palettes with them. Um, the browns are gorgeous. So this is the Avocet, which I've never seen, the American Avocet. The red bottle lapwing has got a cute little story. It's got a really strange call. I'll see if I can find the call and add it. It goes like this. And they say that there's a story about how between Brahma and the um, wattled, red wattle lapwing, where I don't remember this, this it's, 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 it's in our, in, in, it's one of those olden um, Jataka or Panchatantra tales, the, the, the lapwing features. I've seen both the red as well as the yellow wattled lapwing and they're a sight, yeah, they're a sight. The, the Spix macaw which um, they're extinct in the wild, poor babies. I don't know what we humans are up to. Uh, we just don't know how to share the planet, I guess. But recently, Project Spix Macaw, I'm not sure what they're called. They sort of released several birds into the wild. They were bred in captivity and then um, led into the wild. So by now, you know, well into, this is day 18, of Birdtober. So I've been now using photo colors for about 10 days and I'm sure you're noticing just how much my skills have improved with the medium uh, because I stuck with it. I think <laughs> the red-tailed black cockatoo was the hardest thing to paint. I don't think I've done justice to it at all. This is a spectacular bird um, and its tail feathers are just like iridescent red but my skills what I'm always what I was saying is that I've realized and this is something I'd really recommend to anyone who is trying to learn a medium is really stay with it and like a daily practice like almost like a riyaz um, as he would say in Urdu turn up and sh practice every single day and you'll see that your skill levels just sort of rocket at one point this kakapo, I think that it's a bird from the New Zealand. I have never heard of this funny little bird. And it's just like this weird fat parrot which is flightless. And look at it. It's just, just the strangest bird ever. The best part, and a huge shout out to Andrea, is just the opportunity to learn about so many birds. I think that was the most exciting part of bird topa. Love birds, which I don't like much. They're like so clingy. Ew. Um, Eurasian jay. I particularly love how muted the feathers are. A muted brown, dull brown gray. But the blue sort of sparkles through. I, I want to see all these birds, yeah, sometime in life. I, that's, that's my wish. Fervent, fervent wish. I want to see all these birds. I think the orange bullfinch is... My favorite among all of them. The secretary bird, 
the orange bullfinch. I really like the color palette. Um, the very sort of dull blue gray and the bright gold orb, yellow gold orb of the bullfinch. Um, I'm really pleased with this baby. And I'm so inspired to do a whole series on passerines. These, these little fluff balls are called, they belong to the passerine family and they're usually songbirds. Um, that's the heron. Now I'm into day 27, right? And you can already see how much better the use of photo inks has become. Um, just like 20, 25 days into the practice of the riyas. I'm able to really make things glow and um, the mina, I've, I've spotted the mina. And I have to show you this. This, this is um, the oriole. There's a huge family of orioles that lives in the canopies next door. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen an oriole. I promise you it's a sight that you can't forget. It's just incredible. I wanted to show you the difference. I've painted the oriole many times before, actually. Um, this was the first time I painted the oriole. This is just entirely gouache. Um, this was the karandash gouache that I have. That's the male of the species and the female of the species is this very dull, beautiful, pale olive. Um, I, I really love this page. I, I love how spontaneous and alive it is with all these marks. I, I, in my heart, this is the kind of work I want to do. I don't want to do neat work. I want to be spontaneous and I want to flow. And that's the first time I've painted this many times. And as I was saying, I think I have a connection with the Oriole. Um, one day I was missing Appa a lot. This was um, maybe a few months after uh, his passing. And I was standing in the balcony looking out. I had never, I had spotted an Oriole once, two years back before that. I'd never seen an Oriole again. And then I was feeling terrible and I was crying. And then I saw this flash of gold in front of me. I ran and got my binocs and and then I saw the Oriole. Um, and I've never stopped seeing it since then. And I almost feel like um, this is Appa who's come back to say, it's all going to be okay. And uh, yeah, <laughs> a little emotional. Okay, moving on. Here's this cutie pie. This is the white brow tit warbler. It's, I haven't been able to capture just how gorgeous pink and purple and blue this bird is, but look at this little gabu. Um, must paint this again. A paradise flycatcher, oh my God. Now this bird I haven't seen and I want to see it. Um, I've seen the juvenile, the juveniles are smaller. Uh, the juveniles are uh, rufous or orange colored and their tail fe feathers really sm uh, doesn't grow that long. Uh, the, the girls have really short tail feathers, poor babies. Uh, I think it's only in nature where and in among the birds that, that the male of the species is more flamboyant and gorgeous. I think in humans, I think it's quite the opposite. I think the women are more awesome. But just look at this. This is the uh, full grown adult male paradise flycatcher and it's trailing ribbons almost 45 to 50 centimeters long and and i want the universe to manifest this bird like the like the oriole i i'm hoping to see this beautiful baby i want you to sort of also sort of see how i've used the entire page for this one um, it sits so well with the form of the bird almost <laughs> the end the Egyptian vulture, what a cutie pie, little grumpy fella. Uh, so again, another endangered bird. Um, honestly, what are we doing? The barn owl. Now, I love owls. I've got, I'm surrounded by owls. I've painted the barn owl in so many, so many ways. I've even stitched the barn owl. Um, like, <laughs> I want to show you an older sketchbook. This is gouache, I'm not sure. No, I think these are water-soluble uh, markers I used for the barn owl. And here's barn owl again. <laughs> I have lots of barn owls. I'm going to show you um, another little 
cutie pie that someone gifted. Gifts are welcome. Um, this part now. Just look at it. Googie face. Yeah, so that's that was day 31. 31 days of showing up every single day. Bertoba was challenging. Not because of the painting of the bird that I loved. I think it's easy to do something when you love it so. I really do love birds. Um, and it makes me really happy as an amateur, amateur, super amateur birder to spot a bird that I've never seen before and then to look into my books and then say, oh, that's the bird, I identify it. I feel awesome. Um, and uh, bird tuba was difficult for different reasons. It's because you need to have grit and discipline um, and you need to show up it is every single day to paint, right? That's pretty hard. That's something I expect from my students as well. And um, it, it was, it was, it was, I understand how difficult it is to show up every day, but I also think it's a great practice to do it uh, because your skills really rock it. It's the change you see in the way you're approaching something and just your skill levels is just tremendous. Like you, you saw in my sketchbook, I've gotten so much more comfortable with photo colors because I was painting with them every day. What was difficult was to paint irrespective of whether I was ill, um, home was, Kia was ill, or I had so much work to do, I had courses to teach, but I still had to show up and paint every day. But I learned <laughs> some good things about me. I learned that I'm disciplined, I'm highly motivated, I do tend to push myself a lot to get better at things. And uh, yeah, that, that's what I learned about by doing this daily challenge. And once I finished, I, I if moved on to stitching. I don't want to paint now. I have been painting. I've been painting with the Secret Garden folks uh, every course. And I love that. I, I think I love painting. It gives, it centers me and... Uh, that's my space. That's, that's, yeah. And I'm so glad that I've discovered that. That's going to be all, my lovelies. This is my vlog. I think possibly for most of, all of October. And uh, the rest of, maybe November, I'll do another one. We'll see. Thank you, Vani, for giving me the nudge. Vani is one of my students in the Secret Garden. And... Uh, Thank you for the nudge. It's because of you, I think, that I'm recording this and not um, sort of letting it sit in the back bench, in the back burner. Thank you. And all of you people, stay snug. Um, have a lovely November. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.